Hey, 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 hey. The objective of this video is to construct two sample t test for the difference of mu. And I'm going to throw in a confidence interval also. So let's get started. Turn to page 14 of your notes. So let's pick up where we were last time. That now we're about to do hypothesis test for our H O and R ha. So as we're looking at this here, what type of null hypothesis should we be using when we compare? It can be either of those two. And in both situations, please remember, is stating that there is no difference in terms of our conditions and assumptions what are they is still the same thing as it is for our confidence interval we're looking for two independent randomly um, selected groups or SRS our 10 percent rule that applies for um, both and in terms of here we are checking for symmetry. We are checking for any potential outliers. And if there are outliers that we have a sample, enough, big, sample size big enough, we're looking at that. So the bottom line is we're looking for the idea of normality. And please remember, the golden braille value has got to be greater than or equal to 30. And when that happens, our life is easy. Now, for the most part, remember, we're going to be doing a two-sample T test. And here is the naked equation that's straight out of off your formula sheet. And here is the equation. And as we look at this equation... Here are sample differences. Here's the standard error or standard deviation down here in the denominator. And then notice we've got this. And this will be the last time you see me do that because, honestly, this is nothing but zero. And the reason it's nothing but zero is simply because, because up high, didn't I say the mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 equals zero? Yes, I did. So we don't have to put that step any longer. Please also recognize as I look at the ha, when it's greater than, it is going to be a right tail, less than, left tail, two tail, not equal to. Remember with our T distribution, you will never see a negative value, so that's the reason for the absolute value. As we go to our next page of our notes, where is it in the calculator? Go over to stat test number four, so a two sample T test. And it will ask you if you want to pull no, it's already highlighted. Just let it go. Leave it there. Because remember, when we had a two-proportion test, it didn't ask us the pool. It just did it. So whenever they ask you to go into the pool, just say no. So no to pool. Now I'd like to go to page 17 of your notes, looking specifically at problem number 42, just in case my pages are off in the future. Okay, now... Go ahead and read this scenario. Put everything in your calculator. Let's get this party started. Okay, so do we have, okay, do these data provide convincing evidence that the DDT affects the mean relative height of the second spike's electrical response? So here's the thing. You've got two populations. You've got the white mice they were given the DDT poison, and then you've got the control group in which they were given none. And they're looking for nerve activity. And we're trying to determine if there's a difference. So here, our HA, HO, excuse me, is that mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 equals 0, so there is no difference. Remember, I told you this is coming, so let's do it. We're going to write this, what this represents in words. There is no difference in the height of the second spike in the rats 
DDT versus non-poisoned um, to determine stimulation in the rat's legs. That's what your HO is. HA is there is a difference. And then we're putting dot, dot, dot because nobody's got time for that. And then please notice right here, as I've defined my mu sub 1 and mu sub 2, I'm writing it a little differently. See how you like this one. Mu sub 1 and mu sub 2 are the true mean height of the second spite in the rats, given DDT and non-poison, um, non-poisoning, respectively. So it's saying here that this one's for the DDT and this one's for the um, control group. Yeah, you can get away with that on the AP test. Plan. You've got a two-sample t-test for mu difference. Random experiment. So, randomized experiment, and it says it right here. Randomized comparative experiment. Where to go? Right there. Now we have raw data, and as we have raw data that you know you have to put it into the calculator. Put it into your L1. I have mine in my L1 and L2. And once I do that, I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to put both stat plots. I'm going to open up two stat plots so that way I can graph both of them at the same time. So here I have both of them on. There's my L1 and L2. And then when I graph it, that's what it looks like. And then I just write this down. Let me take that off. I don't want you to think that's an outlier because it didn't exist. So there's no strong skewness, no outliers. We're going to proceed with the T distribution. I am going to continue, though, with caution because we have such a small sample size. But it is an experiment, so it, does, it is reasonable. Okay, so all these values are in our calculator. Remember we say no to the pool? Just don't touch it. Let it do its own thing. Its own thing is going to always be no. Remember you have to slide it down to calculate. You have all of your values of your x1, your... Um, mean of the first sample, mean of the second sample, degree of freedom, p-value, t-test, standard deviation of each sample, reiterating sample size. So that's where all this data came from. Here is my equation, plugging everything in. Remember that minus zero thing. Nobody's got time for that. So let's just write this down. Here's our test statistic, and here's the p-value associated with it. So, given that we have a p-value that's less than our alpha, and here are the values, we reject the HL, we support or fail to reject the HA. There's convincing evidence that there is a difference, and notice the reason I have this in pink is because I have, I'm rewriting everything I said here. So, there's convincing evidence that there is a difference in the height of the second spike. Spike in these rats, DDT versus non-poisoned group. So this means that the leg, that the rat's leg was simulated. Okay, isn't that the bottom line? Now, let's remind ourselves of how to interpret the p-value. So assuming that the HA, HO is true, I'm going to pay attention to the green. Assuming that the HO is true, there is, or there's your p-value, probability of observing a difference in this sample mean of 810, which is the difference of those by chance alone. Okay? So everything that's in pink is what is the HO. That is what the HO is. Next, I added a part C. Really, bro. Oh, yeah, you know, that's how I roll. And I want to construct the confidence interval. I have to name it a two-sample T interval for the difference of mu. The conditions and assumptions were met in part A, so I'm taking it and plugging it in. Please, let's remind ourselves of how I found 
this right here for 2.571. So I have, okay, so remember that degree of freedom was 5.9 or something? I might be off a little. Or if we looked at just one sample size, 6 minus 1 to give ourselves a 5. So we're going to go with a degree of freedom of 5, looking at 95% there. So trying to write on this thing right here. There we go. So going over, going up, because here's my 95%, and where the 2.571 came from. And I've got a two sample T interval, which I just passed. And I had the data in my L1, L2. Again, not touching it, it's highlighted, so just let it be. Calculate. Okay, and there's my confidence interval. It's huge. It is what it is. And I'm just going to say the bottom part verbally because I don't have any room to write it. So we are 95% confident that the true mean difference in the height of the second spike in the rats given the DDT um, versus the non-poison or I should say the control group lies within the interval of 1.4 to 14.7 Okie dokie TTFN Tata for now Peace out I've got a raspy voice Oh well Bye bye